So what's better, urine or oral saliva drug testing? Well, I know many of you listening might not care about how the drug test is handled, that it's just part of being a professional trucker or employee, but the new rules are critical for your career. So listen up as we run down the history and science of oral saliva drug tests, discuss which testing method is better from privacy to drugs to detection times and what carriers should consider changing in their drug testing policies. First thing first, if you drive for a mega carrier like Swift or Schneider, you likely have already dealt with oral saliva drug testing. So what's actually changing? Well, simply these tests were considered non DOT drug tests and were not included in the CDL clearinghouse data or used to federally punish a driver's testing positive on a non DOT drug test. But this is changing this summer. DOT's final rule is adding the oral fluid testing procedures as another testing method beyond urine drug testing for safety sensitive transportation employees subject to drug testing under part 40. The rule goes into effect in June 2023 and will likely be ready for employers to roll out the option by the end of the summer. This means employers with safety sensitive employees across aviation, commercial motor carriers, maritime, pipeline, railroad, and transit can update their drug testing policies to include oral saliva testing, which we'll cover in the detail later in the video. But before we go into detail on the drug testing method, does it even work? And the answer is yes, and even better than urine for most testing methods. But why? Well, let's get in the science with Logical Luke. Simply, when drugs enter the body, they get broken down and release the parent compound first and degrades into smaller metabolites later. Oral testing is like blood testing because it tests for the parent compound of a drug, a better measure of recent drug use, while urine testing detects the smaller broken down metabolites that take time to pass through our bodies. Higher levels of the parent compound indicate higher levels of the drug contained within the body. This means that saliva levels can be used to measure impairment. And interestingly, based on recent Quest Diagnostic Drug Testing Index data, the overall oral saliva positivity rate is higher for almost all drugs and more than twice the positivity rate for marijuana. The accuracy of mouth swab drug tests depends on whether they are conducted properly, which we will cover later in this video. In a study published in the Journal of Analytical Toxicology, researchers found that a mouth swab test followed by confirmation testing had an accuracy rate of nearly 98%. The accuracy of a mouth swab test will also depend on whether you use an instant read test or send the specimen to a lab for testing. And this is why DOT's rules are focused on lab testing and not instant oral drug tests. So what about the science of cheating a drug test? Well, saliva in your mouth equilibrates or cycles every 10 minutes, naturally removing any residual substances or debris from your oral fluid so that a fresh sample is collected. And this is why nothing is allowed in your mouth 10 minutes prior to an oral drug test. So any cheating methods of mouthwashes, rinses, or gums are a waste of money and could end your professional career if an adulterant is found. By using saliva instead of urine, donors can collect a small sample that is collected under direct supervision, reducing the likelihood of tampering or a donor challenge later in the screening process. So what is this testing process I keep mentioning? Oral saliva tests are easy to perform and are typically conducted at the place of employment, at a scene of an accident, or at a collection site. And the process takes just 15 minutes to complete. First, there is a 10 minute direct observation period during which the donor will not eat, drink, or smoke to prevent dilution techniques. And this is the time it takes for your saliva to cycle into new saliva. Second, a collector will place a collection pad in the donor's cheek and gum for at least two minutes and sometimes longer. Third, once well saturated, the swab is placed in a vial, handle of the collection device is snapped off at the rim of the vial and the vial is sealed. And lastly, the fourth step is the donor initials to seal. That's it. So now that we understand the basics of how it works, back to our main 
question. Which is better, urine or oral saliva testing? Well, according to the DOT, this additional drug testing method will give employers a choice that will help eliminate the cost of shy bladder evaluations, alleviate the burden on individuals who cannot produce a sufficient urine specimen due to a psychological or a physical medical condition. It'll also help open transportation safety sensitive employment possibilities to those individuals who have disabilities, rendering them unable to produce an adequate urine specimen. And it'll also help thwart cheating. But wait, there is more. So let's break this discussion down into several more areas. Detection time, privacy or invasiveness of the testing method, the drugs found, and reasons to test for each method. So what about detection time? Remember when we discussed how the drug is broken down in the body and how oral saliva measures the parent compound, that's like the psychoactive element of the drug, where urine measures the broken, further broken down metabolites? This is why urine testing can detect drug use from two to seven days and oral testing from a few hours to two days. And in some cases, this method will return a positive result immediately after use. This makes oral testing the best method for both reasonable suspicion and post-accident testing since you want to know if drugs may have played a factor in recent events like a vehicle accident or workplace injury. The early detection window is also very useful in dosage monitoring. So if there's some kind of medication being used that could show up on a drug test, you might be able to see what should be cut back. What about privacy concerns? We get it, people hate peeing in a cup. But with oral saliva testing, there is now a non-invasive drug testing method. Urine testing feels more invasive due to the personal nature of the method. So if you're testing on site and there's an issue for comfortable bathrooms or privacy, oral testing is a great option to use. This is also true for observed urine drug tests where a staff member must directly watch the stream of urine to the cup in these return to duty and follow up testing processes. With oral swab, there is much more privacy because you don't have to watch a stream. It's just right there in your mouth. And in minutes, a sample can be collected nearly anywhere. Sensitive gender observation and privacy issues often associated with urine collection are eliminated for you and the collector themselves. So what about the types of drugs detected? Oral saliva testing can detect the same drugs as urine testing. Federal drug tests require testing of five main drugs, marijuana, cocaine, PCP, amphetamines, and opiates, including synthetic opiates like hydrocodone and oxycodone. Non-DOT drug tests can include drug panels of up to 12 to 14 drugs, so there will be no issue if an employer transitions drug testing methods in their testing policy. Additionally, a negative oral screen results can take less than 24 hours, while a non-negative result can take 24 to 72 hours to come back, it's similar to urine testing. So what about the reasons to test? Well, it depends on the situation. Urine testing is the gold standard and is suitable for all testing methods, which includes pre-employment, post-accident, random, reasonable suspicion, return to duty, and follow-up testing. Oral saliva testing is best used for wanting to know recent drug use, and this could include reasonable suspicion and post-accident drug testing. But oral saliva is also non-invasive and would be great for observed return to duty and follow-up testing. And situationally, if you want a certified collector to come on site and you don't have a decent bathroom situation, then oral saliva is a better option to use as well for your randoms or pre-employment testing. Plus, oral saliva works well in a group setting as the employer can have a dozen staff in a room and test it all at once versus one at a time with urine testing. Again, this could be great for pre-employment. So what should employers or carriers change in their drug testing policy? Before an employer can implement oral fluid drug testing under DOT's regulation, the US Department of Health and Human Services or HHS will need to certify at least two laboratories for oral fluid testing, which has not yet been done. There must be one HHS certified lab to conduct the screening and confirmation drug testing on the primary specimen and a different HHS certified lab to conduct the split specimen drug testing on the secondary specimen. 
if the employer requests split specimen testing for a non-negative result. LabCorp and Quest are expected to be certified for oral fluid testing from the government with others soon after. So carriers have a couple months to update their policies. With both drug testing methods scientifically accurate and forensically defensible, there is no reason to eliminate either method in your company policy. And given your new options, when should you consider requiring oral fluid testing over urine? Well, like we mentioned, since you want to know if drugs may have played a factor in recent events, oral testing is the best method for reasonable suspicion testing and post-accident testing. But it also works great for return to duty, follow-up testing, on-site testing, or group testing. And lastly, there are insufficient specimen or shy bladder cases where we strongly recommend employers to use oral fluid testing. Employers should communicate to their consortium or third-party administrator, your CTPA, and to the collection sites whether they want to utilize urine testing, oral fluid testing, or some combination of both. Employers should also provide their service agents with the specific instances that would trigger a different method. For example, if you have an insufficient oral fluid collection, uh, you don't have enough saliva in your mouth, then maybe switch to a urine drug test or vice versa. While some large employers in the transportation industry have used on-site clinics and regularly conduct urine collections, including direct observation collections, there were concerns in the, in the regulations around who should or should not be allowed to perform a drug test collection. DOT has amended part 40.31 to separately specify the requirements for collectors of urine and oral fluid specimens respectively. The following cannot conduct collections. Employees, relatives, and close friends of the employees. Why worry about it? Use trusted and certified collectors from our collection sites. At CNS, we have our own collection sites and are a certified consortium and third-party administrator, or a CTPA. Our experts ensure that all DOT rules and regulations are followed, including the implementation of random drug tests for you and your drivers, updating your company drug testing policies, record retention, and document purge management. We can even help you find which drug test site to go to anywhere across the U.S. So join our consortium today. For more information, contact us at 800-551-9816. We also help with oral testing and customized policy development. If you have any questions or want to learn more, click the link below or visit us at cnsocmed.com to learn more. With that, thank you for joining me on this drug testing journey. And as always, stay safe out there.